Hi guys, time to cover required practical four. Now the title of this is an investigation into the effect of a named variable on the permeability of cell surface membranes. So we're looking at how rapidly substances get across the cell membrane in different conditions. So it's all about investigating membrane permeability. Okay. Now, as we know, the cell membrane is a bilayer, so it's two rows of phospholipids and substances that are fat soluble and small can get straight through the phospholipids, but substances that are large or polar have to go through a carrier or channel protein. Okay. And we can collectively refer to those as transmembrane proteins. You might be thinking, well, sir, why have you got a bottle of vodka on the screen? Well, that's because alcohol or a solvent can affect the rate of diffusion or transport across a membrane because fats dissolve in alcohol. Now, permeability refers to the ability of substances to cross the membrane. But to put it simply, more permeable means a faster rate of transport. Less permeable means a slower rate of transport. And like we just said, the rate of investigation, the rate of transport could be into solvents such as alcohol, which is why we've got this nice bottle of vodka here, or it could be into the effective temperature. So the effective temperature on membrane permeability, first of all, then, well, when we've got a higher temperature, the molecules will have more kinetic energy, which means they have more movement energy. Now, more kinetic energy is going to mean the phospholipids will have more energy and they'll be moving around more. Okay. And that's going to lead to an increase in membrane permeability at zero degrees and below. And I'll just move myself on the flames there. So I'm, I'm on fire. So zero degrees and below the phospholipids will be packed closely together and the membrane is rigid. However, you would think, well, zero degrees and below, maybe that's going to stop transport, but actually it doesn't because what it can do is cause the proteins to change shape or the tertiary structure to alter, which is going to increase permeability. So to zero degrees and below is going to increase permeability because the proteins are going to change shape. And I've put a little hint here. Do not say denature. I see that mistake time and time again when I mark assessments. What this means, that's to do with enzymes. Okay. In this case, we're talking about channel proteins and carrier proteins, not enzymes. Now between zero and 45 degrees, the membrane is partially permeable as the phospholipids move freely, as the temperature increases between zero and 45 degrees, the membrane is what we refer to as partially permeable. Now, as the temperature increases, the permeability will also increase. And at 45 degrees and above, so at an extreme of temperature, the membrane is going to become highly permeable. That's because the proteins are going to start to change shape and that's going to further increase permeability. So we can see at either extreme, at very cold temperatures or very high temperatures, permeability will increase. Solvents such as alcohol and acetone, which is commonly referred to as nail polish remover, they're common examples you could use to investigate this. And basically an increase in solvent concentration will lead to an increase in membrane permeability. Lipids dissolve in the solvent and the phospholipid bilayer will lose its ability to control the movement of substances. So more concentrated solvent means a greater permeability. This is an experiment you may have to look at. And I always like to show the table first. That's the first thing I look at with a method is the table, because that gives us our independent variable, the thing we're changing, which is temperature on the left. And it gives us our dependent variable, the thing we're measuring, which is color intensity and colorimeter absorbance on the right. So you can get a really good idea of what a practical is going to involve just by looking at the table. Now, remember, this is a required practical. You've got to do it to get your practical certificate. So this PowerPoint might help you write it up in your lab book. And also it can come up in the exam. So this is an example method for the investigation, and it's going to be looking at the effective temperature 
on membrane permeability using beetroot. And myself and my students did this recently. And we got really nice results where we had dilute concentration solutions at lower temperatures and very concentrated solutions at higher temperatures. If we'd have decreased the temperature below zero, we might have gone from dark to light to dark. But because we started at 25, we went from light to dark. You could improve this method further as well by collecting data from two additional groups. So we could add in a couple of extra columns here and here and calculate in a mean that would improve reliability. Now, this is the method for investigating the effect of temperature on membrane permeability. I've decided to simplify this quite a bit from the practical method I use with my own students because it can be unnecessarily wordy and complex. And as Einstein once said, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. Any idiot can take something complicated and explain it in a complicated way. If you really understand it, you're able to explain it simply. Not saying I really understand it or anything like that, but I've tried my best here. So we use a cork borer to form 30 beetroot discs. So a cork borer is going to give you a tube of beetroot and then you're going to slice it up into discs that are three millimeters long using a ruler. Now, beetroot is packed with a pigment called betalin, which is a dark purple pigment. So when that moves out of the cell membrane, we're going to get a really nice dark purple color in the solution. So what you do is wash the beetroot discs, pop them in a test tube, give them a few shakes, siphon off the water. That's going to get rid of any betalin that was coating the outside of the beetroot discs that isn't actually within cell membranes. You're then going to label six test tubes, 25 degrees, 35 degrees, 45, 55, 65, and 75 degrees, and add 10 centimeters cubed of distilled water to each. Then you want to set up six water baths at the temperatures above. You can do it with a kettle, get some boiling water in a, in a beaker, and just add a little bit of cold with a thermometer in it if you like. What we did was we had a few thermostatically controlled water baths around the room and then we just mix and matched with a bit of cold water and a beaker to get the required temperature we were we were within a couple of degrees of those temperatures it wasn't exactly correct but it was close enough now once the distilled water has reached the correct temperature for the 25 degree test add three beetroot discs and time it for 60 seconds so we're getting the beetroot in the distilled water of a certain temperature then after 60 seconds, put the bung in a test tube and shake it 10 times over 40 centimetres. So get a 30 centimetre ruler and it's just 10 centimetres beyond that and just give it a shake 10 times. Okay. And we want to keep that consistent so we control that variable. You're then going to pour the liquid into a clean test tube and discard the beetroot discs. So don't get rid of the liquid. You can chuck away the beetroot, but keep the liquid. So you Pour the liquid into a clean test tube, chuck away the beetroot, then pour the, you know, the purple liquid back into your test tube that's labelled with your temperature and keep that in your test tube rack. You're then going to repeat it for the other temperatures, being careful of the heat. Now, where I said we didn't get the exact temperature, what I asked my students to do was to just record the actual temperature next to these values here and just label them actual, okay? because we like, we're scientists, we like data, we like to do things right. Now, using qualitative and quantitative methods to analyze your samples. Well, qualitative is subjective. It's based on a color change. So we had this scale here. Zero was no color, which was the same as distilled water. One was the slight hint of pink. Two was pale pink, three was pink, four was dark pink, and five was very dark pink. So what we did in our table was we assigned value from zero to five next to each of them. So you can imagine 25 was zero or one and 75 ended up being a five. But the ones in the middle, there was a bit of debate about them. Okay. Now quantitative is where we use colorimetry to measure the light absorbance of each sample along with a sample of distilled water. Now I've got a very nice picture of a colorimeter here. It's the most budget, basic colorimeter I could find. 
I mean, it looks like it's been through some tough times, so we won't be too harsh about it. But I mean, look at these marks and stains all over it. It's obviously had some good use in its, in its journey. So the colorimetry method is dead easy. You take a cuvette, which is a small cuboid shaped plastic test tube. Almost it's not a test tube, but it's a small cuboid container. Okay. You fill it with distilled water. And then you put, it's got a cloudy side or a stripy side and a clear side. And you want it so the light is shining through the clear sides and you don't want to touch the, the clear sides so you, you don't get oils from your fingers on it or smudges on it. You pop it in the, the colorimeter and you press zero. And you've now calibrated that equipment or zeroed that equipment. Then you pour a bit of your 25 degrees in a cuvette, pop it in, record the absorbance. 35, pop it in, record the absorbance. And then you're going to record it in this column here, your colorimeter absorbance next to these temperatures. And you're going to get a beautiful bit of data to plot a graph. If you're sad like me and you're into your data. So to summarize them, temperature and solvents both affect membrane permeability. Extremes of temperature increase membrane permeability. High concentrations of solvents dissolve lipids, increasing permeability, and membrane permeability can be measured quantitatively and qualitatively using beetroot. Now, I hope this was of use to you guys. I know the required practicals can be quite tricky to get your head round on first run through them. So this is a bit of revision for you to help prepare you for those exams. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Take care, see you in the next one.